Okay, so we have just seen our first parametric curve given by this equation here. And as we know now, this is the parametric equation of the unit circle. And so the common feature of all the parametric equations we will see from now on is that they all consist of two parts. Part one is the dependence of x and y on the parameter t. And part two is the range in which t changes. So this is similar to how you would define a regular function. You have a the formula for the function and b the interval in which the function is defined. So this is how it works for the parametric equations as well. Let us look at another example in which uh, we will identify a uh, curve given by its parametric equation. So let's identify the parametric equation x of t equal to t squared minus 2t and y of t given by t plus 1. And so here you're not assuming any restrictions on t, so t can be any real number. In general, the parameter does not have to be called t, but since we have this physical analogy of the parameter being time, we will mostly use the letter t to denote it. Okay, so in this example, we will illustrate perhaps one of the primary techniques that will be used to identify a curve given by parametric equation. So we will use the parameter elimination technique. So the idea is that we will eliminate the parameter t and instead reduce this equation of a curve to a regular equation where the two variables x and y are directly related. One is a function of the other. And we will do it by expressing t from one of these two equations and substituting that expression into the other. So we'll use this second equation to express t through y, because it is easier to do so with the first equation than with the second. Uh, the, 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 uh, with, the, with the second equation than with the first, sorry. So what we'll do is express t through y, so it's easier then t through x because here we have a linear equation whereas for x we have a quadratic equation so of course using the second equation gives that t is equal to y minus 1 if we just transfer this plus 1 here to the left hand side this is what we obtain and then step 2 will be to substitute this expression into the first equation. Which results in the following. We have that x equals t squared minus 2t, but then t in terms of y is given by y minus 1. So we have y minus 1 squared minus 2 times y minus 1. So if we go ahead and simplify this 
expression in the right hand side we will have y squared minus 2y plus 1 minus and then we will distribute this product over here minus 2y plus 2 is minus 2 times minus 1 gives us plus 2 and so simplifying this gives us y squared minus 4y plus 3 and so this is the dependence of x on y and so this now can be treated as an ordinary curve so you see that this describes a parabola oriented horizontally So uh, let us go ahead and determine the intercepts. So the x-intercept is uh, zero. Uh, it is is uh, three zero. So if you plug in y equals zero, we get um, three zero right here. And uh, so because of the plus sign here in front of the square term, this parabola opens to the right, like so. Um, and so let's go ahead and find the y-intercepts. So the two roots of uh, this polynomial are y equals one. Oh, I, I should, um, so let me, This is 3, 0, because if you plug in 0 for y, this is what you get. And then uh, the two roots of this polynomial on the right are 1 and 3. So here they are on the y-axis. And then our parabola will look uh, something like this. it opens to the right like so and passes to these three points um, let us think about this uh, curve now as a graph as, as a trajectory of some particle so we saw that uh, this is the dependence of x and y on t and t goes from minus infinity to plus infinity so when t is increasing, y is also increasing, and so we can determine the direction of motion of our particle. So with t increasing, y increases as well, and so our particle goes upwards along this parabola. And so we have successfully identified this curve given by a parametric equation. We have determined that it is a parabola, and we have also identified the direction of the motion of the particle that corresponds to this parametric equation. So there is this twofold way to think of parametric equations. On the one hand, they define a curve. On the other, they describe a trajectory of a particle moving with time.